Uh, how, how are you doing? Superb. Yes, okay. Uh, so, quick one. Uh, last Tuesday, we spoke about the issues of uh, political communications, its implication on our society, uh, and then the aftermath, what it can actually cause to our peace and then our security and stability as well. Now, we are told that the CID has started an investigation into the alleged comment of lawyer Obri uh, Let me hear your views on that, and then quickly we'll look at uh, some interesting story that is coming up. Uh, former MPs, former members of parliament living in poverty. Uh, what's a lesson is there for the politicians to learn from? And so we're going to talk about that as well. But a uh, quick one, let's deal with lawyer Obri Boahin's comment. It's a step in the right direction. Obri Boahin, Abronyeh, and then um, uh, Osahene Bwachijan. Uh, Bwachijan. They've all been invited by the CID. I think this is indicative of how the election season is going to look. Mm. It will not be business as usual. Uh, people need to be held accountable for all chances they make uh, on radio and on television. So it's a step in the right direction. But should it just end at a point where we invite people, you're yeah, inviting you, yeah, uh, maybe we do one or two interrogations and then we grant them bail. Now it ends there. Certainly, I don't anticipate incarceration of any of them as a result of this. But it sends the right deterrent signal mm -hmm. uh, that if you speak anyhow in this country, you will be held accountable. So I think it's a step in the right but direction. But what does it actually mean when the police say, okay, you made a comment of this nature, and then we would want to invite you for investigation or better still interrogation. Now, in that particular process, what actually goes on uh, as part of the interrogation? What does the police administration sort to find out from those particular people who are associated with the particular uh, comment? We've all been invited before. Um, You've been invited before? We've all been invited okay. before. But normally, when you are invited and the media gets wind of it, mm -hmm. then they call it an arrest or a detention. Okay. Yes, we've all been invited, but they try their best to create a very friendly environment. Mm. Uh, look, I've been invited before. And For then, certain comments you've made of course. on TV or radio? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, so there are two ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you are friends, you are friends with the state. Okay. They may invite you outside the installation or the establishment. Oh, of the uh, police friendly, administration. Not the police. Okay. We know other, you know, institutions that invite. Yeah. Whether national security or the army, um, military intel, for example. So they may invite you outside the precincts of the installation and then speak to you in a very friendly way. But there are times they would actually invite you to the establishment. And I've been, you know, invited and, and by the BNI before. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it, it's always a friendly invitation. But if you don't take care and the media gets wind of it, then the media says you've been detained, you've been arrested. That is why in the case of uh, Koko and Yidoho yeah. and then other people um, works their way from TV programs or radio programs, these could be really friendly invitations mm. uh, so that you have a conversation as to why you said what and whether you can help the state uh, to make good on its commitment of keeping the good people of Ghana safe. So I don't expect Abroni to go to jail. I don't expect to or Boahin or Osahine uh, to go to jail, as a Boachijan to go to jail as a result of that. But if anything at all, it's a lightning rod mm -hmm. uh, that shows that it political communication will not be business as usual in the lead up to the election. And then it also sends a signal to social media users because now people hide behind the cloak of social media. Oh, I didn't actually say this on radio. Oh, I didn't actually say this on television. Okay. Come watch me. You are beaming it to multitudes. Okay. And people's reputation would be at stake. So it's a good sign and I believe it will serve as a deterrent. Okay, but if people cannot actually be detained for the comments they make, okay, now what sort of uh, detention or probably say sort of punishment do you want to put out there, the message you would want to put across? Because does it, just as I asked earlier on, does it just end there? If that is the case, then anyone at all can say whatever they want to say. Honorable Kennedy. They believe that they will be invited and he wasn't at least incarcerated for treason. Mm. And then the uh, reference to a civil war. I don't expect uh, Osahini uh, Boachijan to be charged for treason. 
And of course, Abronya also made some wild allegations against the former president. Everybody gets invited. Now, Samuel of Usampofu, who is the national chairman of the NDC, uh, allegedly is heard on tape to have said certain things. Now, the CID's department of the Ghana Police Service invited him for interrogation. Thereafter, he was charged. And now, as we speak, he's in court. Now, how do you comment on that? And then relating that to the current situation, how do we marry the two? Because if I such comments... See, yes. I still see it, Kwame, as a friendly trial. No, but if that is a friendly trial, yeah. why can't these people be held responsible for same comments they have made? With it's, same a Trump card, mm -hmm. it's a Trump card in the bosom of the CID, and it decides which cards to play. And uh, depending upon the exigencies of the time, what our criminal code says, how friendly you are, you know, the tone of Koko Anido changed after his interrogation. Yes, I know so for that. Sometimes mm -hmm. they just want to say, okay, Kwame, you are a nice guy, but we all are committed to building this nation. Uh, comments like this don't help. They are distracting. Mm -hmm. You shake hands and then you go. The wheels of justice grind slowly, but where there is remorse... That is why even within the penal system in the United States, they can release you on parole. Originally, you should have gone to jail, okay. but they can release you because of good conduct. And so when you express remorse, uh, you are let go. And I believe these trials are very friendly trials, but they send a strong message. We cannot tell Ghana, it as a friendly trial because at, at the end of the day, there will be a sentence, whether it's a fine or it's a jail I'm sentence. Sorry. Yes. You know, when, you, when you find somebody of that caliber, mm -hmm. even a 100K, it's chicken change. But I think the message it undergirds is what is important, that the whole population should realize that we are a nation of rule of law and then things cannot be done haphazardly we will be held accountable for the things we say and do. Yes, because my, my, my disagreement with all these issues is the fact that uh, the first question will be what constitutes a threat? What particular sort of comment will constitute a threat? Because if Samuel of Usu Ampofo said certain things allegedly on tape and now is in court, now why don't we or cannot we classify what Abronye, what Obribuahe and what Osahine Boachijan has said equally being a threat where the police will take up the situation or the issue and as well prefer charges against them for them as well to be in court. And that they is the worry. Decide, uh, when you are tried by the states, you are assuming Kwame whatever, Kwame appear versus the state or versus the republic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have lawyers very, and you know, judges, very competent judges, and you have the right to an attorney. The outcomes of court sittings don't necessarily depict the truth. Okay. They depict the logic and you know, clarity of the arguments that are put forward by the defendants and then and what? The respondents. Uh, the respondents. Uh, so your legal representation will determine uh, to which direction the pendulum and the legal pendulum swings. But fundamentally, I think the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And okay. that is, people have made unguarded statements and the state is taking them on. For me, that is what is the silver lining in the whole of this, mm. that there is some deterrence against the use of, you know, uh, and savory political But comments. does it in any way have some sort of threat on our national security with the nature of comments they made, especially Abronye, Obriboahin, uh, and then Osahine Boachijan I uh, in this particular you, season? Kwame, I indicated to you, I always pour cold water mm -hmm. on some of these inflammatory comments. Look, people are thinking of bread and butter issues. This morning, some families are struggling to take breakfast. And each of these people either in the past enjoyed largesse from the taxpayer or are currently enjoying. And so somebody who is suffering already, you know, eking out a living, trying to take care of their family, because you went on radio to say this, so I should go out with a machete and kill myself or get killed. And so these are unguarded statements. And I think in some cases, because our political atmosphere supports people who are loud, mm -hmm. cacophony leads to appointments. So when you look at the area of people who are appointed, they are the loudest in the lead up to the election. elections. Okay. Yeah. You don't rule a country based upon uh, unguarded statements. You don't appoint people because they were the loudest. After a political show, I'm sure they receive calls. Ah, a no man, pa, oh yeah, pa. People don't look at the <laughs> logic and soundness of your argument. The, the argument, oh, yes. As for today, oh, you made him look like a There was a point in your delivery. Yeah. 
But then look at the logic, the sequence, the chronology. Yeah, that is why I put, it, I, I put it to you that does the uh, sort of communication they try to make have some sort of influence or implication on our security? It, it, it because we, only, are, we are heading towards elections. We are almost it, in June. I'm so, people have become numb. Okay. The population has become numb uh, to political incitement. And I keep telling you, when p p parties call for demonstrations, look at the turnout. So if you think because you want to have a diplomatic passport or continue to have it, if you think your wife has to go to the U.S. or Canada to give birth or continue to do that, whether in opposition or you are in power now, don't expect somebody living in a shanty town, somebody living in a kiosk, somebody who doesn't have a, a sheet mm. of cloth to cover himself to save himself from the vagaries of the cold weather to go out and die for you. And so we are numb. The population is numb. Uh, to some of these comments, but in the spirit of you know propriety, okay, and uh, that is why we would say that they should be decorated. Let me take business. your quick comment on this particular subject. Uh, we are told that uh, some former members of parliament are living in poverty, and Abam Babi, who happens to be uh, Ghana's second speaker of parliament, has actually made a comment on that. Life after politics mm. is very important. When you go to other countries whose democracies have really developed, when you leave Congress, when you leave the executive arm of government, you have something going on for you. And Kwame, I'll be very blunt with you. We are poor people. You can't show me a single indigenous Ghanaian family with five generations of wealth. Mention any rich person in Ghana, and I'll tell you the person is a one-off. Kwame Despite, rich guy, comes from a very poor background. My good friend, the CEO of this beautiful company, a very successful businessman from a modest background. And people who are from royalty, mm -hmm. and I've been to Chebi, I wouldn't call the Akufuado family as a rich family. So generally, we are poor people. My dad was a butcher. And so people become successful, whether in academia or in business, as one-offs. The shortest way to f making fortunes in Ghana is through politics. Okay. So people go in as m modest teachers, lawyers who do banchi and yam cases, mm -hmm. uh, as has been indicated by somebody. People who maybe have not even received a five-digit salary in their lives before. Then boom, Kwame, All a of struggling family. person. Now you are controlling hundreds of thousands of dollars. In some cases, millions of U.S. dollars buying property in Dubai and other things. So the shock you have, the cultural, psychological, and economic shock you have, when those things are no longer there, would come smiting you on the face. Okay. So that is why it is important. Kofi Annan said that the pinnacle of global politics, he was U.N. Secretary General, you could call him the de facto leader of the world. Mm -hmm. When Kofi, you know, retired from governors, global politics. He became a farmer. So our politicians don't have a plan B. After politics. That is why they want to do anything to remain in power. Okay. Uh, uh, so the person feels, how do I go back to the classroom? How much can GES pay me? Okay. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so it becomes, you know, crystal clear that there is no light at the end of the tunnel Daniel, for them. Okay. And sadly, many of them, and somebody will say, okay, they take an ex graduate of 400K. An MP told me, he spent as much to go to parliament because we've commercialized the process when you share a lot of you know things to delegates and after that the larger population within the constituency you give freezers in some cases and cooking you know equipment or you know stabilizers and mm. all that so it becomes very difficult for people to keep up uh, financially with what they put in. So you will turn out, you know, becoming a poor person eventually. So eventually. I think okay. they should engage uh, so themselves. So I think th th this particular topic yes. uh, is a matter and of concern. Let me make one final comment. Universities should engage politicians when they have after, retired. After retirement, because okay. Clinton and others make a lot of money through speaking engagement. So we should have that culture. So okay. politicians will know that. Uh, when you but let me, let me say right a very up. big thank you to politics. you for making time with us. So uh, this is where we, we, we will wrap it up. So uh, next week, probably we would have to uh, look at.